all the men went to work. The men left early in the morning in their red and white boats that bore their wives' names. The names they had chosen to bring them luck. And they came back with fish, tons of fish of all sizes and colors that the neighboring villages' trucks would then carry away in exchange for the money they needed to feed the women with the lucky names, to clothe them, to take them out dancing. And everyone lived happily like that, the women giving their names to the boats, the boats giving fish to the men, and the men giving money to the women. But one day, the village was touched by Grace. Grace was a woman without a name, a boat, or a man. A man, mine, had fished her out like an enormous golden creature to keep her from drowning by the shore. Nobody ever found out where she came from. Grace set foot in the village. She dried her clothes and waited on the beach for someone to undress her. And one after the other, the men of the village came to moan in this Grace's golden arms. They removed her dry clothes and rolled with her in the mud and the kelp. A whole summer, Grace rolled around the beach with all the village's men. They didn't give her much money, but they gave her fish. Fish of all sizes and colors that Grace devoured, licking her lips with her golden tongue before sticking it in the men's mouths as they begged for more. And the women said nothing. They continued to eat and dress and dance, throwing lacerating stares at Grace whenever they met her, because a woman with no name deserves to be looked at that way. Then a man, mine, left in his red and white boat, but he forgot to come home when the sun went down. Other men went and found him. They found his boat disemboweled on a blue rock and my man on the ground, his head broken and red, his eyes rolled inwards, his memory blackened under his smooth forehead. They brought him back to me so that I could nurse him back to health, and that's what I did. And my man's memory returned piece by piece to nest in his broken head. He remembered the sun in his eyes, the blue rock he had seen too late, the muffled sound of the rock in the white belly of his boat, 